Welcome to St. John Presbyterian Church. My name is Alan, and I'm the pastor here this morning. And it's my privilege to welcome you to worship this morning, whether you're in person or watching on the rebroadcast on YouTube. Our per capita is still being collected at $50.15 for active members. Our adult Sunday school is working their way through the Acts of the Apostles at 9.30. So you can join them. We also have Bible studies for our younger youth and older youth, led by Cora and Karen. Our sermon club meets Wednesdays at 1030. That's a time where we gather to discuss the previous week's and upcoming week's texts of Scripture. Our great banquet weekends are fast approaching. Our men's weekend is May 18th through the 21st. And our women's weekend is June 1st through the 4th. And you are welcome to join us on that 72-hour experience of spiritual renewal that many call a life-changing experience. This afternoon at 2 o'clock, we are having a gathering for the Great Banquet. That's an invitation for all of you who have been through one of the weekends to come and worship and make gifts of agape. So if you've been through a great banquet, you can join us today at 2 o'clock. Any other announcements this morning? John. So May 14th is Mother's Day, and we'll be having Fancy Hat Sunday. So come with your fancy hats, whether you are a male or a female. Other announcements this morning? How about prayer requests? Any prayer requests this morning? Vicki. So that's a thank you for Vicki on the way the church supported she and Paula. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations, you two. Other joys or concerns? Well, it's a pleasure to see you all and to worship with you all this morning. So let's invite Charlie to share his prelude.
please stand if you're able and join me. Call to worship. Day by day, God leads us to the to deep, deep, deep pools of peace, peace to, to the, the green, green lush lawns of grace. grace. Day by day, Jesus calls us to pour out ourselves in service, to anoint the stranger with hope. Day by day, the Holy Spirit shows us the community we could be, the family we are all to become. is that God forgives us. Forgive others and forgive yourselves. Thanks be to God. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the
first reading is from Acts 13, 1 through 3. Barnabas, Barnabas and Saul commission. Now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, a member of the court of Herod, the ruler, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. This ends the first reading. second reading is from Acts chapter 14, verses 8 through 18. In Lystra there was a man who could not use his feet and had never walked, for he had been crippled from birth. He listened to Paul as he was speaking, and Paul, looking at him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said in a loud voice, Stand upright on your feet. And the man sprang up and began to walk. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in the Lycosian language, The gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates. He and the crowds wanted to offer their sacrifice. When the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd, shouting, Friends, why are you doing this? We are mortals just like you, and we bring you good news, that you should turn from these worthless things to the living God, 
who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. In past generations, he allowed all the nations to follow their ways. Yet he has not left himself without a witness in doing good, giving you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons, and filling you with food and your hearts with joy. Even with these words, they scarcely restrain the crowds from offering sacrifice to them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Lord, open our ears to hear you. Open our minds to know you. Open our mouths to praise you. Open our hearts to love you. And open our lives to serve you. May the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. In Christ's name, amen. We learn much about the diversity of the Antioch church by the prophets and teachers who are named. Barnabas, meaning son of encouragement, was a Levite from Cyprus. Simeon was from North Africa. Lucius Serene which is modern-day Libya. We see that the gospel had even infiltrated the court of Herod by mention of Manian, and Saul was a Roman citizen. Indeed, the church in Antioch was a vibrant, diverse gathering that served as a central hub of Christianity, especially as base of operations for Paul's mission. They must have been praying for guidance on how to take the gospel to the Gentiles because that's the prayer that Holy Spirit answered. Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. And that work was to go and share the gospel in Gentile lands like Lystra. This shows how Holy Spirit is responsible for setting us aside to ministry. It was Holy Spirit who called me to ministry over 20 years ago, and Holy Spirit who still sustains me for that work, more so than I ever imagined. Then the Bible says, after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on Paul and Barnabas and sent them out. We still lay hands on people when we commission them for service in the church. The reason we do this is to recognize the call of Holy Spirit on that person's life, but also to let people know that the church supports them in their ministry and they do not go it alone. Paul and Barnabas would have been grateful for that support for they were going where they would face certain rejection and misunderstanding. They were going to people who weren't Jewish and who had gods of their own. Paul and Barnabas' task was to try to help them realize that there was one God who sent God's Son to die for their sin. Peter had healed a crippled beggar in chapter 3. And there the people mistook it for being a result of his power and piety. But he quickly diverted the glory to the Son of God. Here it is Paul who sees the man and that the man had faith to be healed and told him in a loud voice, stand upright on your feet. What was it about the man that Paul saw? As Elisa can tell you, she can see it in the faces of her students as to who's engaging the topic and the ones who are just coasting by. This man must have been engaged. In his whole demeanor, he must have shown Paul that he was believing every word that he was teaching him. And so Paul healed him. The question is, though, 
How does faith relate to our own healing? I've known people with great faith get cancer, and yet they are not healed. They end up dying. But death is God's ultimate healing. Sometimes someone is so sick, I once told two children standing in front of their mother's coffin that the only way God can heal them is by taking them to heaven. I hope that was of some comfort to them because I believe it to be true. I once was counseling a woman whose husband had been miraculously cured of cancer. Now she has had cancer and was frustrated, even mad at God, because she was wondering where her miracle was. If God had healed her husband, why wouldn't God heal her? Our healing doesn't come like it did in the Bible. No matter what others may say, your health is not dependent on the level of your faith. Faithful people get sick and die every single day. What matters is that we trust that God is faithful. We put our trust in men and women of medicine to heal us. We put our trust in pills and therapists to make us well. Sometimes, though, our situation is such that we cannot be healed. Sometimes people are just going about their normal routine when they are shot dead. There's often no healing that comes from rounds of an assault weapon. Yet we trust that God is faithful. What God can't heal on earth, God heals in heaven. Sometimes it's the only way that God can heal us. Paul's healing of the crippled man caused a stir among the people of Lystra. There was a legend that said that the god Zeus and Hermes would disguise themselves as men and come down to earth. One time they sought hospitality in the Phrygian hill country. Only one couple welcomed them, and they were rewarded by having their house turned into a temple with a golden roof and marble columns. The houses of those who refused the gods were destroyed. And so when Paul healed the man, they thought that these were the gods who had come down to visit them. And so when Paul healed the man, they thought that they were Zeus and Hermes. They called Barnabas Zeus, And Paul they called Hermes because he was the messenger, the one who did all the talking and teaching. Even the priest of Zeus came with oxen and garlands to make a sacrifice to the gods. Now we might find it odd that this is how people would respond to God's healing, but we make gods of men and women still today. Just look at our obsession with athletes and celebrities. Look at the way we idolize our politicians. We set men and women on pedestals and give them our adoration of praise when all praise should go to our Lord and Savior alone. Churches aren't immune as they idolize their pastors and quote them more than they quote Jesus. We must learn to be humble. We must learn to realize that all people are human. We might enjoy the gifts of athletes and celebrities, but we shouldn't idolize them. They are flawed just like the rest of us. Paul and Barnabas were quick to displace the praise and worship to God, but they had to explain God in a way that the people could understand. First, they tore their clothes and rushed into the crowd. This was a sign of distress. 
They express their distress at being mistaken for God. Second, they shouted, friends, why are you doing this? We are mortals just like you. They could have gotten caught up in all the commotion. They could have yielded to their egos and let the people worship them. Others in the same situation would have been tempted to do so. Do we not like it when we are singled out and praised? Do we not like it when we are the center of attention? It distressed Paul and Barnabas who insisted that they were nothing special but mortals just like them. Third, they said that they had come bringing good news. Thus, they should turn from these worthless things to the living God. The worthless things of which they spoke were their gods who were as good as dead. Paul and Barnabas said that their God was the living God, also known as as the one true God who alone had the power to heal the sick. Fourth, they said that this living God made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. This is one of the oldest descriptions of God there is. In Exodus 20, verse 11 We read, in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. We call this God's general revelation. General revelation is proof of God that we can plainly see all around us. The very existence of creation and of ourselves is enough proof that there is a God and no one should be lacking in their faith that there is. Special revelation is that which we see in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. But generally speaking, all you have to do is look around to see the work of the Creator. Yet some dismiss this world as simply a scientific phenomenon, a cosmic coincidence, rather than the work of an intelligent creator who put great care into creating every tree, every flower, every creature, and every person in God's image. I, for one, can believe in both a big bang and a creator. I believe that faith and science go hand in hand. Science gives us perspective into the way this creator God works in the world. The Bible tells the story of creation in mythic terms, not scientific. Science makes me believe in God more, not less. Fifth, Paul and Barnabas said that up to Christ's coming, God allowed all the nations to follow their own ways. Yet he has not left himself without a witness in doing good, giving you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons and filling you with food and your hearts with joy. Now that Christ had come, it was imperative that they follow his way, a way that had been opened up to the Gentiles. Now this creator God can be known in a relationship through Jesus Christ, the Redeemer, by the Holy Spirit, the Sustainer. But even this didn't restrain the crowds from making their sacrifice to them. They didn't understand. But that's how it is when we share our faith. Sometimes people just won't understand. They're stuck in their old ways. They may have their own relationship with God. And many people believe, but they've lost faith in the church. And there's good reason for that. They've seen the celebrity preachers marketing their books. 
They've heard churches disparaging whole groups of people. They've seen them neglect the poor, remain silent on social justice, and focus on nationalism. We must be vigilant to let people know that we believe in a God who created us and this world around us. We need to let them know that we believe God's son died for us so that we might have the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. We need to let them know that Holy Spirit is there to give them strength, purpose, and guidance. What follows today's passage is important to note. We read, but Jews came there from Antioch and Iconium and won over the crowds. Then they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. But when the disciples surrounded him, he got up and went into the city. The next day he went on with Barnabas to Derbe. Paul had gone from being a god to being stoned and left for dead. This was how the gospel was received and how it's still received by some, which is perhaps why it is so difficult to share. Being Christian has become a bad thing tied to political agendas and rigid ideologies. But here we preach the love of Christ for all, even those who may reject it. Jesus himself was persecuted before. That's what led Paul to tell the people of Antioch upon his return. It is through many persecutions that we enter the kingdom of God. Let us not fear of rejection, of scorn, of setbacks, of ridicule, and let that prevent us from sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with all the world. Let us speak in general terms that people can understand. Let people know that here we hold science and faith up side by side. You don't know how many people don't think Christians believe that. And let people know about Jesus who is our healer and whose power is at work in us to do extraordinary things on his behalf in all the world. Amen.
which comes from the study catechism. What is the mission of the church? What forms does this mission take? Creator God, who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them, you've given us this beautiful day and we rejoice because it is the day that you have made. We hope that by being faithful here this morning, you might strengthen us throughout the week to be a people of praise. We look all around you at the beauty, at the irises blooming, the trees flowering, the bunnies hopping across the yard, pets at play in the backyard, squirrels rustling through the trees, and mama birds sitting on nests. And we see the wonder of your creation. Redeemer God, you gave to bring us grace and life. You bring us grace of second chances. You bring us grace to fill our deepest needs. You bring us grace to heal a multitude of sin. And you raise us to new life. And one day you will call us to life eternal 
when no longer encumbered by the trappings of human design, we might enjoy you fully and share the hope and the life and the joy of heaven eternally. Sustaining God, you guide us, you strengthen us, you encourage us, you keep us connected to God, and you sanctify us to make us more holy and holy. You get the good out of us, and you make us better people as we try to make the world a better place. You make us more Christ-like, and it is in his image that we strive to live every day of our lives. Triune God, we come to you in confidence and prayer, for you are a good God, steadfast and loving, faithful to the end. We pray for this church and we ask that you continue to sustain our passion for worship. We ask that you bless our music ministries. We ask that you strengthen us in mission to our community and that you give our voice to share the gospel of Jesus Christ to everyone we meet. Be with the churches of New Albany as together we unite to show the strength that comes in being one church despite our denominational differences. Be with the churches all over the world, especially with those who huddle and worship under threat of fear and violence. Lord, be with our nation and its leaders. Give them a bipartisan spirit as together they cooperate to make the decisions that impact the lives of every citizen, not just a select few. Give them wisdom, give them guidance, give them a sense of purpose, and give them courage to lead this country to the greatness that it aspires to be. We pray for those who lead us on the state and local level as well. Lord, we pray for those who are struggling economically, physically, mentally. We pray for those who are worn down by life. We pray for those who need your healing now. And we understand that sometimes that healing comes only by the grace of heaven. But we selfishly pray that you heal those who have cancer especially our children. Be with those who fight cancer and leukemia and other serious diseases. Be with the doctors and nurses who bring healing to them. Be with our first responders. Be with the members of the armed forces who serve us overseas and at home. Be with those who battle addiction and be with those who are experiencing sobriety. Be with those who are going through relationship troubles, some of which are ending in divorce or have ended. Be with the one without hope such that they would think of ending their own life. Help us to be a light in the darkness of this world. Help us to be encouragement to the downtrodden, a voice of justice to the oppressed, freedom to the prisoner, and good news to all the world. Help us to be your followers in this world who needs a whole lot of Jesus. Be with those who deal with the difficulty of aging. 
Be with those who don't feel like themselves. Be with those who just don't feel comfortable with who they are. Be with those who doubt you and give us the faith to bring them to faith. Be with those who feel they've been hurt by the church and let them know that not all churches are hurtful or hateful places. Help us to resist the forces of evil. Help us to overcome the temptations of sin. And guide us on a path that leads to righteousness, peace, truth, and justice for all. We rejoice with Vicki that this is a supportive church when people go through difficult times. We ask your blessings on Luke and Emily and their baby that is growing. These are those we have named and we are a joyful church today. But I know that we all have come with our concerns as well. So help us to share those with you now in a time of silence. Give us wisdom to know that your answers come in your way and patience knowing that they come in your time. Hear us as we pray. Holy God, unite our hearts with the church universal as we pray with confidence as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. With generous hearts, let us give as we are able, as our ushers come forward to collect the offering. Almighty God, you are the giver of all gifts. Take what we are able to offer you in return and use it to expand your kingdom in our community 
through the life and mission of this church. We pray this through Christ, the greatest gift of all, and in his name, amen. amen. our good our shepherd, shepherd to gather, gather us together. together. May we, we not, not wander from, from his flock, but follow wherever he leads us, listening for his voice and staying near him until we are safely in your fold to live with you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the light of Christ surround you. May the love of Father God enfold you. May the power of Holy Spirit protect you. And may the presence of God watch over you. And remember, wherever you are, God is and all will be well. Go in peace. Holy, holy, holy.